Welcome back to the Anti-Man channel. We are back with another Stop This Play segment. This video goes out to new subscriber Video Game Society. He asked me to stop the HB wheel out of the quarters 137 formation. Now I haven't got one out of the quarters yet, but I did find a play out of the 4-3 that can do a good job at shutting down and bottling up the HB wheel. Now my new subscriber didn't specify which HB wheel play he wanted stopped, but there's only two of them from the split formation. One of them is from the split close pats, and the other one is from the split close. Now, I want to take a few minutes to talk about the split close formation because a lot of people are running plays from that formation in this Madden this year because the route combinations are deadly. The AI can't handle the streak and the C routes and the post routes coming over the middle of the field, and most stock plays will get destroyed. Another aspect is the split close formation is hard to get pressure on because of all the hot reads that it gives you. I mean, if you see the blitz coming, it's too easy to just dump it off into the flats for easy yards. And if you're facing coverage, the route combos are so mean that one of the wide receivers is going to get wide open. So if you face somebody running the split close this year, the chances are that you've gone up, you've gone up against the wide receiver corner, the PAF slide, the pit slot curl, the HB wheel, and the X drag trail at some point. So right now, I'm going to give you the key to shutting down any of the split close plays. All we're going to do is be systematic about it. So the play we're going to use today to shut down the close HB wheel is the 4-3 over from the fire zone, the fire zone 2 from the 4-3 over. So let's get right into this. And we'll set it up right here. So what we've got is a fire zone blitz. Now, one of the best ways to stop the split close formation is to play in a what I call an under smoke two type of defense or a, cover, a fire zone two defense. We got two deep safeties and your corners are in the flats because it's too easy for your opponents to hit you in the flats all day long. If you play some sort of a cover four or a cover three, they're going to destroy you all day. So you've got to have the two corners down if they try to hit you with a quick pass in the flats because what we're trying to do is just, if they want to throw to the flats and get three and four yards, that's fine. Throw it in the flats, you'll get no yardage, and we'll end up getting the ball. Now, where people are trying to attack you with the HB wheel is, you see that corner route that Lockett is on and the Doug Baldwin route, the post, the deep post route. Now, most stock plays will get destroyed. Even this play right here, let me just run it real quick. Even this play right here will get destroyed if you just run it stock. I mean... The defense, the, the combinations are just so nasty that it's hard to stop this play. And, it's, and not just this play, this formation. It's just difficult. So the way we're going to look at it is what we want to take away is the corner route. We want to take that corner route away because most people are looking for that corner route. If, if it's man or if it's zone, that's going to be their first read. And their second read is the ball win route deep over the middle. If you're in cover two, it's going to destroy most cover twos. So the way we're going to set this particular blitz up is we want to put this guy right here and we're going to put him in a purple. And that's going to take away that corner route, right? Because he's going to back up and he's going to be sitting right there to pick that route. So let me set it up like this. But the way we're going to set it up, that way I actually set it up is we're going to shift the line to the left, right? And then we're going to globally blitz the right outside linebacker, which is the guy on the left of the screen, this guy right here, Freeney right here. So we're going to... Uh, globally blitz him, shift the lines to the left, globally blitz him. Then we're going to QB contain. And that QB contain is going to keep your opponent in the pocket. If he wants to roll out, he's going to get sacked and hopefully have to get rid of the ball quickly. So we QB contain. The next step we're going to do, we're going to move this guy out here. Um, the easiest way to kind of describe it is just to move it maybe two or three, like, I don't know, two or three players over. Just kind of at this spot right here, especially against the um, split close formation. Kind of not over Baldwin right here, but just inside Baldwin. So just right there. Then we're going to come down to this D tackle right here, which is the left D tackle. And we're going to slide him over one notch. Now when you slide him over, he actually stays in position. And then we're going to come over to Peterson right here, put him in that purple zone. So that uh, buzz zone is going to hopefully defend that corner route that they're looking for. And then we're going to get back to this free safety here. And then we're going to manually cover Baldwin's route going over the middle. Right? 
And that's what we're going to do. So it would be like we're on man or something like that. Something like this. But we're actually going to be using that. And you want to take that um, deep post route away yourself. So the way people like to run this is they're first going to be looking for that corner route. And then they'll go to uh, Baldwin. So I just want to show you the pressure. Hopefully uh, what we're going to see is the taking away of the Baldwin route. I mean the locket route, that corner route. And then hopefully the pressure will get in. Right, so I'm going to drop back. I'm going to look for uh, lock it over here, and what's going to happen is that that uh, DB that we've put in the buzz zone is going to play that corner route, and right there, the corner kind of looked open, right? So if your opponent sees that, he's going to see him. Oh, look, he's got that separation. He's going to try to throw it, and then the corner is going to be there to play the ball, and he doesn't know that that corner is on that purple zone. So that plays in our favor when we're trying to get that pick. And what's going to happen is a lot of times you're going to get the pick because he's going to think that that's open and it's not going to be open. So let me just run it a couple more times. And right there is exactly what we wanted to see. So right here you get an A gap coming in. So what, we, what I've been able to get is you get A gap pressure because we kind of created a little nano here. And you see this guy right here slips right through. So that's the left D tackle or the right D tackle in that left A gap. He actually slips right through, ends up pressuring the quarterback before he can even get the read off. And that's what this play is going to do against the split close formation. So we want to shift the, line back, shift the defensive line to the left, globally blitz the right outside linebacker, this guy right here, QB contain, which is going to put them on a contain, move him about here, somewhere like that. Move this DT, slide him over once. Purple zone this um, DB on the right over here. And I just like to pass commit just in case it's a um, play action, play like that. And we're just going to run it a couple times. So now I'm just going to try to run it a couple times and show you what happens. And right there, sometimes it will get through there if your opponent's able to angle the pass up. You will get up there. But the whole point is we're trying to contain and make him kind of hesitate on that throw to the corner right there I'm going to try to throw it to the corner and right there ends up getting broken up because that DB is sitting right there so let me move it here and what what will happen is occasionally you'll get that A gap coming in which is really difficult to get against um, the split close formation unless you've got some sort of nano and right there you see they defend it so it's taking away the corner route so that's the first thing we want to do we want to take away the corner route we don't want that easy corner route to get them 15, 16 yards really easy. You see right there that DB is going to play it. Right there he caught it, but at least he's right there to make a play, and you never know he could end up picking it. Hopefully we'll get a pick in one of these examples because usually he will pick it. And you see right there the, um, the DT Nano came in where he sli slipped in right there. And you see right there. Actually, it was a B-gap nano. Look, that time he comes in through the B-gap. And another thing you can do is if you have a fast acceleration guy, you want to put him at that, I think at that left tackle spot. So right here, if we go back to the play, I'm going to put uh, Calais Campbell as their fastest guy. I'm going to put Babin over here. Calais Campbell, who's got the fastest acceleration for this team, but there's plenty of other teams out there that have way faster guys than Calais Campbell. Put your fastest guy at the this spot right here, that right D tackle. Shift the line to the left. Globally blitz the um, right outside linebacker. QB contain, move him back here. Slide this guy, buzz zone the right guy over there, and pass commit. And don't forget that your your uh, responsibility is to be governing uh, this route, this post route over the middle. And make sure you step in front of that route because that will be your opponent's second read. So if your opponent drops back, he's going to be looking, trying to hit that route right there, and ends up not getting it. Now, another thing you can do, if you know your opponent is going to that, you can spotlight that receiver. You can spotlight the, um, let me spotlight him, lock it, which will make the defenders play better near his area. And see right there, completely just, and that's, there you go. You get tip drill for a pick right there. If your opponent forces that throw, he is going to get picked. Let's try it one more time. 
Now right there, I didn't actually pass commit. I'm I keep trying to hit the, the corner route. And you see, it just takes away that corner route, or at least defends it better than these stock plays. I'm going to try to hit it one more time. And he's just not able to catch it. And what you get a lot of times, if it's cover two, that guy is going to be catching the ball wide open. So we don't want to give away that corner route too easily. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to go to the other route. Let's say your opponent wants to go and hit it to the flats. So he wants to go to Lynch. He's going to get tackled immediately, right? So going to Lynch is not going to be an option for him. He's only going to get one or two yards. Let's say he wants to go to uh, Wilson in the flat on the right side. That is the easiest play right there, and he's probably going to get anywhere from five to six yards because we're putting that uh, DB over there. We're putting him on a buzz zone. He's going to play a little bit further back, and he will get five to six yards. If your opponent hits that guy in the flat and he notices it right away, he will be able to get yards there. So that is the weakness of the defense, the fact that that uh, tight end out of the backfield will get yards easily, but the adjustment is easy if you if you, if you know your opponent's going there. You could just leave this this um, flat zone like there, but again, you'd be giving up that easy throw to lock it because I could set it up exactly the same way and leave him on the flat zone. You see, he's on the flat zone, and this time I go to lock it, and you see lock it is wide open, so we can't have lock it running like this and just getting easy touchdowns like this. So that's why we always want to put that um, DB on a buzz zone, and we will be happy to give up the uh, flat zone because most of your opponents will force the ball anyway because they're not used to being stopped when they run this. So one more time, we're going to try to go to lock it. I try to angle it up, and he ends up being there. So what's going to happen is, let's say your opponent doesn't like lock it, and he wants to go to the post over the middle which you will be guarding. So I'm going to put this guy on a man defense. He's probably not going to play it very well, but that would be you manually guarding that. So let's say I look for Lockett. I don't really like the look, and I look for it, and I don't have any time because that A-gap comes in. Shift the line left. Globally blitz the left of screen linebacker. QB contain feature. Move this guy back about here. Slide him over a notch. Put the corner on a purple and pass commit. So I'm looking for Lockett. I don't really like it. Gets bumped. Throw it deep. That would be you guarding that. Now I know you caught that, but that's going to be you guarding that. And that's going to be your opponent's second read. So if you're guarding that, and let me kind of simulate if that was guarded. All right, let me put it like that. So I look for Lockett. Don't really like it. And here comes A-gap. Right, so the A-gap does come in um, somewhat frequently actually but the, the the whole point of it is we're trying to take away that first corner route and we're trying to take away the deep route and the only route we're really giving up is the tight end in the flat on the right so if he wants to take that and he wants to take this throw right here you saw that a gap was coming if he wants to take this hopefully we, the defender will get there and he'll only get five yards every time move him out slide him over buzz zone pass commit Make sure you guard that, that post over the middle. You look in, looking for that post route, and you see after two reads, the pressure gets to you. So hopefully this is a good way that you'll be able to get pressure on the split close formation because it's a really difficult uh, formation to stop, and especially the HB wheel. Most opponents, they might even look for that, right? That couldn't even get it to them. They might even look for the post route first, right? Some some people, if they're trying to go deep on you, they'll look for the post. The post route will be their first read. And if you're there, right there on it, that'll make him hesitate. He'll be looking for the post route right here. You're on it. He'll hesitate and have to dump it off here. And right here, hopefully you bottle it up and contain it. And also, we're looking for that A-gap to come in occasionally. Uh, getting pressure now. Let me man this guy up on him. He's not really guarding him, but let's say he's looking for that first read. That's you guarding him. He doesn't like that read, and he has to check down, but he doesn't have enough time because the pressure is coming in on him. Uh, that's going to do it for this edition of Stop This Play. We got a couple more plays to stop the HB wheel um, coming out soon. Get into the lab. See if this play will fit into your custom. 
Um, it's a really good play, I think, to just kind of contain and give your opponent different looks. If you've already got some plays that stop the HB wheel, this is another good play to get pressure up the A-gap and take away the corner and the middle. You know, recognize that the only thing you're going to be probably giving up is the flat flats to the right side. And if your opponent wants to throw that play or run that play the entire game and throw it to the flats, then I guess that's the way he's got to win. Uh, but anyway, defense is always about making that adjustment. Uh, if you like this video, um, give it a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more segments of Stop This Play. Uh, until, until next time, the anti-mind's out. Peace.